Okay, welcome to this tutorial. The first thing I've done is I've got some yellow duchess satin fabric. It's a thin, um, lightweight duchess satin. It's not the thicker quality. And I've got some ivory cotton. Uh, what I plan to do is make a petticoat, which is going to be the cotton, with some frills. And this skirt, they'll both be full circle skirts and eventually it will have a box plated uh, lace, uh, overlay skirt on top. So first of all, yeah, I've cut out my full circle outer skirt and petticoat. So now working on the, um, the petticoat with the ivory cream cotton. And I want to create a yoke waistband with a side opening with some velcro. Now what I've done is I've got two layers of scrap cotton from what was left over. I've pinned it over the top and underneath you can just see the whole of my underskirt which is, as you can see, laid out across the floor here. So I've just pinned around the edge there. And then what I'm going to do is measure three inches out from the line of the curve on my skirt here. Okay, you can just see I've marked in a fabric pen here three inches out from the circle where the pins are. And next you want to cut your yoke, but don't cut through your main skirt as I was just about to do. Okay, <laughs> you just want to cut through the top two layers. I have now cut out my two sections of yoke waistband. Don't forget to cut out your hole to match the hole of your skirt underneath. Next is to sew the side seam on the skirt. And here you can just see I'm just giving it a press with the iron. So I'm pin these seam flaps out. This is just um, one side seam I've sewn here, the other is still open at this point. Next take your yoke and you want to sew a seam in the same width that you've sewn the seam on here. I think mine's about 2 centimeters wide which is a bit wider than a normal seam. Um, so just do that on one side of the yoke and again leave the other side open and give it a press with the iron. I've now pinned my yoke to the edge of my skirt at the top. Do this with right sides together. So you've got your good side, your seam on your skirt facing up, and the good side of your seam on your yoke facing down. Next I will be sewing it on, just a normal seam one and a half centimetres in from the top, around the edge, end to end. Okay, we've now sewn the waistband on to the edge of the skirt. Now we want to iron it, but there's just a method here that my mum's going to quickly explain. Okay, we need to turn the yoke to the inside. So, just so you can keep it in position while you're ironing it, make sure that you put a bit of tension on your seam there so that you can fold it. And just put a pin in there just to hold it like so and then just do that all the way around just to make sure that those where it meets at the seam there it's completely flat okay now you want to sew um, the other side seam but you want to leave your gap for um, your fastening whatever you're going to use I'm using uh, Velcro. Uh, we already did our measurements earlier so uh, I put it on and mum measured where I can easily get it on and off over my shoulders and we've gone from this point here and just sewn down to the bottom of the skirt. Okay take the uh, side seam where we sewed from earlier on and we're going to put some Velcro on. First of all turn in your edge here and I forgot to film this before we put this velcro on, a centimetre and a half in, 
and then I've just pinned the velcro on three places here next we'll just be sewing this on I've now sewn on that velcro on the one side and now we need to do the other so I've turned the skirt the right way out and pinned on the other side so it matches up I have also now sewn on my velcro to make the fastening for the side of the skirt and instead of doing a hem for the bottom of the skirt I've just overlocked it on the overlocker I'm now making some ruffles for the bottom of my petticoat and I'm using a uh, stiff net it measures approximately nine and a half inches wide I've cut out about six meters 48 centimeters long worth of tool here um, I'm not sure if that would be enough as yet but what I've basically started doing is pleating to make each pleat I'm coming out 3 inches from where the last pleat finished and then making 1.5 inch wide pleats each pleat ends up at 1.5 inches wide I've now sewn my pleated trim onto my skirt and I just first of all pinned it all the way around and just leveled it up with the bottom. I've just gone a little bit shorter by a couple of millimetres from the bottom edge but pretty happy with that. I think I recommend pleating net is a lot easier than ruffling net. So it looks quite neat and I think it looks a bit more uniform as well. Okay so that's the petticoat done. Next we're going to move on to the yellow satin skirt. Okay, we've moved on to the yellow satin skirt here. I've sewn up my side seams and I want a zip in the back. It'll be a concealed zip so um, apparently according to the expert <laughs> we can only do this if we cut uh, down the back from the top to the bottom. Next I've hemmed up the bottom of my skirt as we've leveled, we need to level this for the next layer to go on. So I overlocked it, you can see the overlocking stitching here, and then just did a simple hem on the back there. Right, this is going to be the next overlay, some pale yellow lace. It's not too soft, but not too stiff, and it just drapes and holds out nicely. Uh, the idea was I wanted the scalloped effect at the bottom to line up more or less with the bottom of my outer skirts. Um, I did do many trial runs with this because I wanted as much fabric in this um, as there is in the petticoat and the yellow skirt. Um, the only way to have done that, if I could have done it quite easily and cut out another full circle skirt, but then you will lose the um, embroidered um, scallops at the bottom. Sorry, folks, <laughs> forgot the name. Um, so the only other way to get in as much fabric, which is around five meters, as the underskirts, is to pleat the. Uh, skirt you can gather it but I found that gathering bunches quite thick and it's also more to sew into a waistband so I've gone for the idea of flat pleating I'll just show you a trial run I did earlier okay so this is a section I just practiced on and uh, I've tried box pleats but I wasn't quite happy with that um, and I tried just doing um, a couple of flat pleats to just really bring in that excess fabric but it still wasn't enough 
so you will see in a moment I've had to end up going for four pleats every section of sewing to really bring out that amount of fabric that I want to go out with the rest of the skirt it still makes it flip bunchy but the difference is from uh, gathering is it's flatter and easier to deal with okay so I've now cut uh, this lace this lace to um, a bit longer than floor length from my waist. I know the underskirt is a lot higher but it's just to save dealing with so much width of fabric. So I've cut mine to about a metre long and I'm going to start pleating because I want my pleats to... Right, I'll just go back to my example piece, sorry. I want my pleats to come out either this way going left and that way going right. So I think it looks prettier. That's just my personal choice. So now I've got my centre point for the front. Okay, so we have our centre point here. I want the pleats to end up at one inch wide. So I've measured out, sorry, measured out two inches from that very first pin. I've done four pins because I need four sections to make into one pleat. Okay, we've started to pleat our skirt here. We're near towards the end here on this side. We'll just show you quickly how we're doing it. We're doing four pleats. So you fold the first un bit under until it butts up against your next pleat underneath. each mark and put a couple of pins in to hold it and we're also pinning further down as well just to keep them under control and nice and flat we may not get four pleats in at the end so it might have to have some adjustment towards the end before it goes into the zip. We'll just go over it again and say we might only get three pleats this time. Two. There we go. So we've now got in the centre here, we've got our pleats going this way to the left and folding that way to the right. Okay, we have now, having pleated the outer layer, I've now got a level on the skirt, which meant that at the top here there was a little bit too much excess, so I've pulled that up to make it level at the bottom so what we're going to do now is to actually pin all these place, pleats in properly and sew them so they don't come out just take a walk around the back at this stage we haven't actually sewn up the back seam OK, we've just laid it flat out on the table you can now see where we've pinned the two layers together and how much excess fabric there is across this top. We are now going to cut this. Ah. Okay, just ignore mum's up only five minutes there. Uh, here we are cutting. Okay, obviously you want to make sure that everything is very firmly pinned down in place on the other side. And then just keep cutting that till you get to the end, so all levels up. Okay, I don't know if you can see on the video here, but we've detached this from the skirt. Um, and uh, we've first to anchored the pleats in place. So I've done two rows of stitching to hold it on. You probably can't see it on this video because it's practically a good match colour thread. <laughs> um, 
if I put if I put two rows, it will give it a bit of extra strength. So it will doubly make sure that they stay on because it's getting quite heavy at this point. Okay, we've got our yellow satin skirt here, and I'm going to sew in an invisible concealed zip. This one's eight inches long. It's a bit longer than I wanted, but that's all I could get. And you need a special zip foot as well. I'll show you that better after taking it off because I've already put it on. <laughs> um, when you're lining up your needle to do your stitching, first of all, you put the zipper into the left, sorry, yeah, the left hand groove. And you want your needle to be snug up against your zip without actually going through your zip. So go to your bite adjuster at the top and move that left or right to find the right position. And then the needle will move. And so you're ready for stitching it in. Go down as far as your zipper. But don't force it any further. And a uh, best option would be to not go backwards and forwards to finish off your stitch. Just stop. We've now reached the zipper pull. And we're going to stop there. Don't force it any further. On the opposite side of your zip, pull the thread through. So both threads now are on this, this side. Tie a knot in that and then just cut it off. Okay, if putting in a zip is a bit confusing for you, this is the way to do it. This is the outside of your petticoat, and there's your side seam there. Lay your zip on this side and allow for a seam allowance, and your zip is actually upside down. So if you just turn it over there. So when it goes into your seam and you turn it the right way, there's your zipper. Put in the other side of the zipper foot, as you can see, the one that we've put in already, like so. And what you need to do is for this side of the zip, you need to fold to the right. And then pin it in place, the same as you did with the other side. And you're going to sew down as far as you can on that side. This is where the awkward bit comes in because the whole zip is going to be upside down you're going to sew down as far as the zipper handle okay to put your zip in this side you're going to use the groove on your foot on the right hand side again with the needle just try putting the needle into the material and make sure that you're not going to be hitting the teeth if it starts to hit the teeth you will know so Use your bite control again to move your needle away from your teeth. And you're going to sew it all the way down. And again, sew as far as the zipper puller and then stop. And then don't go backwards and forwards with your machine. Pull the threads back to the back of the zip. Right, we're now going to sew up the seam, which means that we've got to change to a different foot. Now I'm sure this, this has a name. <laughs> But to me, it's called the lefty-righty foot. Basically, you can get right up to the edge uh, because the whole foot is open there. And we, I'm going to be using the right-hand side. Okay, now what you want to do is fold your seam together like this. There's your zip sticking out and this is the seam I'm going to be sewing so put that underneath your foot move your zip out of the way and then where you finish sewing your zip right there that's where you can start sewing so line it up put your foot down and we're just going to go backwards and forwards for a couple of stitches Okay, 
Now I'm going to sew my seam all the way down to the bottom. Here is the seam that has just been sewn down the back of the skirt. So that completes that part. Okay, you'll next want to iron the back seam flat on the inside. And you can see at this point the end of your zip is still loose. What I'm going to do is just run a few catch stitches to sew this down to the inside of that seam there so this will stay in place otherwise when you put it on this will have a habit of moving around and it will also feel uncomfortable <laughs> next we want to measure from the top of the skirt to just past where the zip opener is that would make it 21 centimeters on here uh, I forgot to explain earlier, but the reason we're doing it this way is because I want the two skirts to open up separately. Otherwise, you could just do it all in one. Okay, next, we want to take the lace skirt and turn it inside out. And we're going to the back seam here. We're just lining them up. And we want to measure the 21 centimeters down that we just measured earlier on the satin skirt. And at that point, we just want to put a pin in. So that marks that point. And then you're going to sew all the way down to your hem. Okay, so slightly differently from the other skirt. Okay, so I've now sewn a seam from the pin all the way down to the bottom of my skirt. Okay, we're now going to join the two skirts together as one. Uh, earlier on I just ironed the inside there, so that's got a crease line in there so it folds underneath, so it hides away that nasty raw edge. And now we're just pinning it to the zip there. I'll just let mum carry on. Okay, when we get to the bottom of the zip, I'm just going to continue down. Don't sit like this. There will be a little bit left at the bottom, as you can see. It hasn't actually been sewn, but you can do a quick um, whip stitch on that to close it up together. And then what we're going to do is so down one side then leave a decent enough gap at the bottom below the zip and then come across and then sew up the other side I've now sewn the zip down as we just mentioned and I've also sewn the two layers together across the top there just see on the inside so 
that completes that next stage. And so now we move on to the next. We're starting on the waistband. I've made my waistband the usual three inches wide that I tend to do. And you need to take your waist measurement and add two and a half to three inches long. And you want to make sure it fits along the top of here. I'm planning on having a waistband that meets, so that's the type I'm doing. Okay, I've now sewn my waistband across the top here, like so, to the other end, just over a centimetre in from the top. And you want to be able to see the top of your zip when you come to fold your edges over later. Okay, I'm now putting some stiffener in my waistband and you want to line it up with, to the end of the zip. Uh, it's a little bit tricky but I've done my best. And then you see where your row of stitching is here that you sewed your waistband to your skirt. You want to push that right up as far as you can go. I've just pinned it there just for the video to hold it. Um, so what you'll be doing is making sure that that is butted right up against the sewing, so as far as you can go. And then you want to turn this in. And then just pin it. Like so. But first of all, before I go into the next bit, you just want to carry on butting that up against the stitching. Okay, I've now started neating off the inside of the waistband. I've tucked it in at the ends, but I'll show you this when I get to the other end. And you'll see here that I've got some pins in place. And basically, the better way to do it is to turn the edge in sort of section so that's where the last pin was and you want to pin this down but you see you're pulling it over the edge of the uh, stiffener you don't want to pull it too much because then you'll start bending this inwards you want it just to touch and this just to meet the line of sewing it's really fiddly and then you rip the patience and you just pin it down. And then you want to go back and take the halfway between those two pins, turn it in again, just pull it and you can keep turning this in if you've still got too much slack at the top here. So that's a bit too tight so I'll just roll that forward a bit underneath. And you can keep checking your outside as well to make sure you haven't got a thin band or a thick band <laughs> on the other side and you're not pulling it too tight. You don't need to go through all the layers because you'll find it really difficult. And then just work. I'm just showing you here what I did at the other end. You want to turn your ends in. Pull it over. And then just carry on. This is where it gets a bit tricky. So you've got to hold that in, pull that down, and turn your end in. <laughs> so tight.
Okay, sorry about that earlier. <laughs> it was trying to fit loose, so we had to cut it a bit. So just carry on, turning your edge like I showed you earlier, like so, and just checking the other side. Okay, and just carry on all the way along here. Okay, the next part is, uh, and this is my preferred method to do a waistband, is just to catch a little bit of the fabric there from underneath and a little bit of the waistband. This means then that you don't get any sewing shown through on this side, but there are other methods you can use like you see on trousers or jeans today where they run two rows of sewing there. That's a quicker method. Um, but this can be just as strong if you're very careful. And just take a little bit there and a little bit there. So you're just catching a little bit of each. Like so. And when you get to the end there, You'll just be doing some little catch stitches there as well, the same sort of way, just to seal the end off. The last thing to do is to pop some press studs on or poppers or hooks and eyes as I have done here. And that completes the fastening. Just do your zip up and then close your hooks and eyes. Okay, and um, this completes the skirt. I'll just show you quickly here the, the layers that we did earlier. Got your petticoat with the net, which pleating works a lot better, as I mentioned earlier. And then you've got the satin skirt and then the lace. And then as you can see now, we've managed to squeeze all that um, lace fabric into the amount that's in the other skirts as well. So it now goes right the way out. 